providing a comprehensive overview of our accomplishments and the factors driving our success. On the business performance, our disbursements grew by 44.1% in FY23 on a year-on-year -year basis, indicating strong momentum across businesses on the ground. Due to healthy on-ground demand, disbursement activities have regained momentum and reached the pre-COVID levels. The bank has also witnessed a substantial increase in retail asset disbursement, which grew by 72.8% at rupees 1,580 crores. Our collection efficiency is improving steadily on the back of business and the economy nearing pre-COVID levels. The overall collection efficiency for our bank stood at 102.2%. On gross advances, the bank's gross advances in FI23 crossed the rupees 6,000 crore mark, with Vikas loan portfolio crossing the rupees 1,200 crore mark. Vikas loan, the bank's flagship product in the unsecured business loan offering, to offer to the existing graduating JSD customers on the back of increased government impetus for nurturing MSME growth. Consequently, the AUM of the Vikas loan grew to Rs. 1,232 crores in FY23 from Rs. 213 crores as of FY22, while the customer base for the same grew by 2.5 times to 1.919 lakh customers. The bank gross advances stood at Rs. 6,114 crores as compared to Rs. 5,063 crores in FY22, an increase of 20.7% year on year. On the deposits and borrowings, our total deposits stood at 5,167 crores as compared to Rs. 3,850 crores, registering a strong growth of 34.2% year on year. The bank continues to focus on granular retail deposits. Our borrowings at the end of March 2023 formed 28% of our total liability, the majority of which is from refinancing institutions. We have currently a network of 527 branches, of which 95 branches are liability focused, while 24 branches are asset focused, and the balance comprises of rural outlets. On our asset quality, the bank has seen significant improvement in cost non performing assets, which reduced to 3.1% in FY23 from 11.8% in FY22, and the net non performing assets, which decreased to 1.5% in FY23 from 5.9% in FY22. The bank is targeting a GNP of less than 2% and NNP of less than 0.4% in the coming financial year, FI24. On our earnings side, net interest income stood at Rs. 746.6 crores as compared to 584.5 crores, an increase of 27.7% year on year. Our net total income stood at Rs. 844 crores as compared to Rs. 678 crores, an increase of 24.5% year on year. The RE improved to 19.3% in FI23 from 18.2% in FI22, while our MIN improved to 9.5% in FI23 compared to 8.6% in FI22. Despite the rising interest rate scenario, our cost of funds reduced to 6.7% compared to 7% in the corresponding period last year. Our cost to income currently stands at 60% as compared to 60.9% in FI22. We continue to be remaining well capitalized. Our capital adequacy ratio of our bank currently stands at 33.7%, Tier 1 comprising 30.8% and Tier 2 comprising 2.9%. Finally, to summarize, we envisage multiple tailwinds that will enable the bank to scale up at a faster pace. We have identified key focus areas which will act as a catalyst for growth in FI24. The bank aims to focus on growing gross advances by 30% approximately, deposits by 35%, achieving a return on assets of 2.2% and the return of equity of 15% in the coming financial year. Operationally, our key focus areas include product diversification, maintaining GNP level below 2% and net NPA level below 0.5%, leveraging digital initiatives across multiple apps, taking CG FMU cover for JSD and Vikas loan, building a very strong Vikas loan book of rupees 2,000 crores, and expanding our branch network. Thank you. Over to you for your question. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Mr. Agarwal from Motilal as well. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, congratulations on a good quarter. A few questions I have. So, first is on the GNPA. We have seen very uh, sharp reduction in GNPA during FY23 from 12% to 3%. 
and uh, now the gross GNP has come down to 190 odd crores, which includes some bit of ECLBS also. So if we can talk about like uh, what is the unprovided exposure that we are left with, and also if you can give us some sense on the performance of the ARC book, how do you see that going forward? Sure. So uh, thanks for the question and good morning. So on the unprovided part of the book, uh, you know, net of ECLGS and the provision that we are carrying, it's around 35 odd crores. Uh, this is something that we will cover over the next one quarter. Uh, in so far as the ARC book is concerned, uh, the cumulative valuation of the book on a 100% basis was 135 crores. And uh, till March, we have made a collection about 40 odd crores, which is 10 crores a month. Uh, this is in line with our expectation. Even though the trust has been set up for a period of five years as the regulation, our expectation is that we will be able to redeem the entire uh, ARC portfolio by the end of the next financial year. Right. And uh, secondly, on the profitability, we have seen uh, sequentially uh, earnings moving up and we ended the year with a 38 crore profit in Q4. So can we take this exit ROA and ROE for Q4 as a baseline going into FY24? How do you see the ROE is like, ROEs, ROEs moving from here? Yeah, yes, indeed. That is the baseline for us to begin with. So we delivered around 38 crores, right, for the quarter, and that's uh, that's where we start. Um, on an ROA, ROE basis, as we have guided, uh, we would be targeting to inch up our ROA to around 2 to quarter and uh, ROE of 15%. Uh, that's what we will be working uh, as a bank for the next year. Okay. And uh, lastly, on, on the growth uh, part, uh, we have seen good pickup on the disbursement growth and same has come up to 33% uh, in Q4. So what is like the level that we are uh, targeting now in our MFI business in the next few quarters? And how do you really see the mix of inclusive finance and the retail assets moving going forward? Okay. Do you want to uh, on this yeah. So what we're really currently talking is around approximately around 350 to 400 crores in inclusive finance. 50 percent of that coming from Vikas loan. The intent is to really grow the Vikas loan portfolio from currently two lakh customers with an average outstanding of out approximately around 60,000 rupees at this point of time, which will broadly remain the same, probably give and take 10,000 rupees on the higher side. So we're likely to end up with around 4 lakh customers of Vikas Stone, which is a key focus area. And we also covered that under our trade guarantee scheme of CGMFU, FMU, which broadly covers the substantial risk that could ever emanate from the portfolio, even in a one-off circumstances. On the retail asset growth, we are focusing in terms of mortgages, which is currently clocking around 50 to 60 crores per month, or an average. And currently, a 1,000 crores approximately, which is likely to reach up to around approximately 1,700 to 1,800 crores at the end of the financial year. Commercial vehicle where we are clocking around 40 crores of disbursements per month, likely to uh, go up at an exit rate of closer to 75 crores at the end of the year. And the portfolio likely to increase from 400 crores to approximately around 750 to 800 crores at the end of the current financial year. We are likely to see a mix of around 55% for inclusive finance, not necessarily by slowing down the growth in inclusive finance, but by a substantial higher growth and the long-term assets in terms of the uh, retail assets portfolio. So the mix may tilt closer to 57, 55% at the end of the financial year in terms of non-inclusive finance assets. Sure. And uh, just related to this, if I can ask one more question. Uh, like now that we are focusing more on the retail assets, our uh, mix of mortgages and the cost one is going up. So how do you really see the impact of all of this on your OPEX and the cost income ratios? I think the idea is to be able to build an operating leverage here when we invested. We see some more investments coming through, especially in terms of expanding our branch network and increasing the uh, you know feet on street for uh, some of our retail businesses like uh, mortgage and CV. So uh, I think uh, given that we we will have two engines, you know, so to speak, one is the Vikas loan, which has a premium attached to it in terms of pricing. Uh, that will be marginally offset with the kind of uh, growth we expect in retail assets. So uh, uh, overall, for the next year, we will hold on to the kind of margins that we, we are having today. Uh, the idea is that um, whatever compression in margins that we may have overall uh, will be more than offset by the reduction in the credit costs in the portfolio. Right. Thank you so much, and wish you all the best. Sure. Yep. Thank you.
Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Piyush Chadda from Seven Dip Trading. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for a great set of numbers. I hope you can hear me. Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, just wanted to do some housekeeping uh, around the numbers. So for March, we said we had a 37 and a half crore PPOP. Uh, would it be reasonable to expect that the run rate of PPOP would be slightly better than this in the coming year, leading to a PPP, PPOP of around 500 crores for the year? Yes, I mean, on a full year basis, that's what we are targeting. Uh, our first uh, uh, toll gate will be Q1, uh, where we expect to hit, uh, go a little over 100 uh, and then pick up uh, from there. But on a full year basis, we are looking at a 500 crore number. Sure. And in terms of credit costs, what would be our normalized credit cost? Would it be around 1 to 1.5% per year? Yeah, I mean, now uh, that we have been able to clean up the book and all, uh, we would uh, expect to be closer to 1% uh, in credit costs, uh, not taking into account the credit. Sure. And in terms of the current NPA book, uh, would we still need another 30, 40 crores of provisioning before we are at... Uh, you know, before we are at a at a normalized run rate for NPS, would that be accurate? Uh, no, there is uh, uh, some uncovered, uh, unprovided for book of 35 odd crores, uh, like we mentioned in response to the first query. So we we would want to get that covered by end of Q1. Uh, but at the same time, we are also looking at a recovery target from NP and the right off pool. So sure. uh, I think uh, we will be able to offset the two. Great. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Uh, just one last query around your deposit activities. We've typically seen the small finance banks uh, that try and use their asset branches for deposit gathering don't meet with uh, great success. Uh, I mean, the markets for asset growth and deposit taking tend to be different. How are you planning to solve this problem? Because otherwise it becomes a huge cost issue. Yeah, no, so for, yeah, so, you know, this was a year of reset for us, you know, but now that we are looking at expansion for this year, especially we intend to have a branch expansion of around 80 to 90, of which half of it will come from, you know, conversion of the asset branches into multi-product branches, uh, selling both assets and deposits. <laughs> so to you, Shwai, to the fact that uh, the asset branches probably have not been as successful. What we were, were worked on, which had worked out pretty good, is in terms of making it composite branches, which means there's a team which is focused on deposits operating out of the same branch and focusing only on liabilities, and there's a sub team which focuses only on the assets. So to the extent they don't really target exactly only the asset customer, but operate out of the location which are more asset focused. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Shah from Ambika Finca. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a really strong set of numbers. I have two questions. One is on your collection front. So how is our collection shaping up? I can see your collection efficiency has gone up to 102%, but how is it now shaping up? We have given the collection efficiency both in terms of the pre-June 21 portfolio and post-June 21 portfolio. We see a substantial nominalization in closer to 98% in the IF book and closer to around 97% or percent in the non-IF book. Uh, we still have a focusing in terms of whatever is the pre-June 21. Uh, quite a bit of that has thrown obviously into GNPA, which therefore they want to really recover back. But the residue left is very, very marginal at this point of time. We see that we into overall on the basis of the overall portfolio, moving to closer to our 98 to 99 percent, we're starting from Q2. Okay, understood. And sir, uh, the other question I had, is there any room for uh, for the NIMS expansion? I understand that, uh, so uh, before I lead it, that you will maintain your margins, but is there any room to improve on NIMS? Uh, we have seen quarter on quarter improvement to 10 and a half percent, but is there further room to improve? It? So, uh, you know, uh, uh, one thing to note is that for the full financial year, we haven't really raised our uh, rates and fixed income products, especially into the finance. 
right? But given that the rates have been going up and our deposit rates have also gone up in the last two quarters, uh, that's something that we would want to review end of Q1. Uh, our target is that we are able to maintain a 10% margin dim on an overall portfolio basis. Right, understood. And uh, so, uh, just a last question on your uh, portfolio diversification. Are we planning to expand in any other uh, any other state? Because if I can see quarter on quarter, the Maharashtra percentage is still around 40%. Uh, do we intend to bring it down to some uh, closer to 30% or are we comfortable Maharashtra being 40% of our total uh, <coughs> advances? We don't have any specific plan in terms of reducing the portfolio in Maharashtra, the stabilized and improvising but the uh, entry into other few states as well as acceleration in terms of branches in states like Karnataka, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh will reduce necessarily this percentage from 40% to closer to 30% over the next 12 to 18 months. Specifically in the inclusive finance portfolio. Right. Understood. Okay. Great. And all the best for future quarters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Amit Garg. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, first of all, congrats for the wonderful quarterly performance. Uh, the, some of the questions have already been answered. I just wanted to understand which are the regions that, that, that are expected to drive our retail AUM group. Any specific focus regions that you are intending to switch? So, uh, in the thing stand today, uh, there are a few states we would like to expand to, especially in CV. So, uh, CV, for example, we would want to focus on the southern states and going into Andhra. Uh, for mortgage, we will continue our focus in North, where we started our uh, businesses about a year back in Delhi and the surrounding regions. Uh, but at the same time, we have seen good prospects from Maharashtra, uh, MP as well as Gujarat. And, uh, and these are the states that we would want to uh, continue growing on. Uh, as far as South is concerned, two states that we would like to have our presence in is uh, essentially Andhra and Kerala. Andhra and Kerala, okay. I think that's from my side. Uh, all the best to the team for the uh, quarters to come. And thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Raju Opal Ramanathan, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes Mr. Raju Opal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, a great uh, delivery on numbers, and uh, as we spoke roughly three quarters back, I think uh, your entire team has been able to execute your strategy quite well. So, good off on that. Uh, a couple of uh, questions here. Uh, what is, uh, the first question is, do you have aspirations to become a full-fledged universal bank over the next three, five years or so, or maybe longer? And uh, if you are thinking about that, is there any specific roadmap that you have? That's the first question. Second is actually linked to your uh, distribution, uh, particularly the branches and the cost of growth. So uh, what, is, uh, what is your longer-term aspiration in terms of uh, the cost of growth over maybe the next five, seven years? Are you sort of expecting to... Uh, clock at least at 25 percent uh, trader over the next five seven years. Uh, and uh, the last question that I have is uh, linked to an observation that you made on the Vikas loan. Uh, could you explain the guarantee mechanism that is there uh, for the Vikas loan product that you have? Thank you very much. Sure, Mr. So, Mr. on the Universal Bank, we are clearly now focused in terms of building a very very strong small finance bank platform. Currently, do we have an immediate plan? The answer is no. Will it evolve? Yes, I think it will be a logical progression for any small finance bank to become a universal bank at the point of time. Uh, it will certainly not in the next two years. The next two years, our intent is really being a, being a, being a very strong financial inclusion player. So, a uh, technically, a small finance bank can do all that a universal bank can do, except for two conditions predominantly, which is one, 50% of our portfolio has to be for rupees 25 lakhs and below. Which we are observing, we will be in this uh, range uh, year, year after next, and even probably two years from now on. The other one is that 70 percent of a book has to be PS, uh, PSL, which we are very comfortable. In fact, we are surplus at all points of time that we sell PSLC. So, uh, now the forex side, 
uh, we uh, small finance banks have been allowed to become ad1 uh, bank so to the extent there is not big constraint in terms of being a small finance bank uh, and uh, universal bank but our aspiration would be that but these are in the next one two years you know, we are solidly focused in terms of building a very strong small finance bank platform at this point of time and in terms of our deposit growth given our uh, base is low our focus always has been in terms of going uh, aggressive in the retail segment fully retail granular deposits they have been fairly successful under it at one point it went to as close as 80% retail currently we are hovering at around 70 75% the intent is to go back to 80% and we do with the expansion in branches and through some of the digital acquisition we are fairly confident that we will be able to clock a 35% growth for fy24 and thereafter we will obviously at the end of fy24 we look at it but around 25% looks to be pretty comfortable the challenge though has been in terms of acquiring real retail casa deposit uh, we we did really miss that in the last year in this coming year the intent is really go to closer to 22% of casa and specifically within the casa more than 80 to 90% will be granular deposits which will be broadly be deposits which create a flow through the flow so we are focusing on that on the uh, other question in terms of vikas one vikas one is a specially focused product in terms of graduating jld customer only for the purpose of business they need to have a visible clear business on which they kind of want to really expand and the loan sizes vary somewhere between 60000 to up to 1.25 lakh though the broadly the range has been in the 75000 uh, the system we have covered cover is a little uh, complicated one to really explain but it covers 75 percent of the credit losses after an account has become empty up to around 15 percent coming in from the fund and five percent in a technical sense but at the maximum of around 20 percent of the portfolio becoming empty we will get 70 percent possibility scenario 70 percent from the agency and five percent will be our contribution this is not being taken or a cover on an ongoing Year on year basis, as you would know, based on our uh, limited experience, every four to five years there is a risk which emanates, which makes the portfolio losses higher than three or four percent. This is to make sure that we have solid predictability in terms of covering ourselves with CGMFU. There is a cost attached to it. We are looking at the cost as an investment rather than as a cost, more as an insurance, and it will really be useful in one of events ever it would have to happen. But gives us a focus under stability and almost a safety net in terms of looking at the segment far more. Uh, not would say aggressively, but far more intensely than otherwise. Thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, as far as the distribution uh, aspirations are concerned, uh, how would uh, that likely to play out uh, over the next five years? So you are currently at uh, about the branch presence. The library branches are around 300 numbers, right? No, so uh, li pure liability focused branches are a little over 90. Uh, we want to double that number this year. But in terms of overall liability deposit trajectory, and this is something that we have talked uh, uh, talked about and guided in the past as well, uh, our ambition is to have a CD rate of 100% uh, by 2025. So, which would mean that from 2025 onwards, uh, our deposits will match the loan book. In addition to that, uh, given the kind of investment that we are making in leadership as well as the franchise, uh, we would really want to, uh, you know, come closer to our peers in terms of the CASA ratio. It's today 17%. Uh, we would target somewhere around 20-22% uh, for next year and then creeping up to 25%. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Ranish from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir, uh, and congrats on great set of numbers. So just uh, three things from my side, uh, one on the uh, clarification. Uh, so uh, in our uh, press release, we have mentioned that our one EMI tested collection efficiency is 96.5. So this is the entering gross NPA pool, or this is excluding the gross NPA pool? No, it includes the uh, NPA pool as well as the book that got built up to June 2021. Uh, if you look at the book which we built after June 2021, uh, our collection efficiency, one EMI adjusted is 98%. Got it. Just to clarify, it includes all the book. Yeah. Okay, okay, got it. So, so in nutshell, I think collection is any which way is uh, close to 100%. I mean, uh, uh, given our cross NPA is close to 3%. Yeah, yeah. 
got it. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, ROI guidance of 2.2% uh, uh, versus uh, Q4 ROA at 1.8. Uh, so try to assume that the exit ROA, uh, you know, Q4 next year uh, will be higher than 2.2 because the guidance uh-huh. which you have given is for the full year. So yeah, correct. No, uh, clearly yes, we would want to be in the range of you know anywhere between 2 to 2.7 to 3 uh, percent. Our our long time objective is that we are able to have a steady state ROE of uh, around 4 percent and thereabouts which will take us anywhere between 18 months to 24 months to accomplish. Got it, got it. So Q4 will be, uh, let's say, uh, would be definitely more than 2.2. Uh, D1, we are assuming... It will be, okay. Yeah, 2.6 to 2, between 2.6 and 3. Got it. And just the last question on the yield side. Uh, so what are the uh, lending rate hike we have uh, took in MFI book uh, since the uh, new uh, guidelines? No, so we haven't actually had any uh, rate revisions in our MFI book, uh, even though, you know, like I said, that uh, for the last two quarters, we have seen a hike in deposit rate. Uh, I believe uh, we would want to review our uh, pricing on the uh, MFI book uh, after Q1 in terms of any revisions that may be required. So what are, what are our lending rates as of now in MFI? Uh, we do around 24 to 25% for the JLG book. Uh, it's okay. three percent more for Vikas loans. Okay, so in Vikas loan it is close to twenty seven twenty eight. Correct. Okay, okay, okay. That is from my side. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Have a good day, Renish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nikhil Vaishnav from High Town Securities. Please go ahead. Nikhil, may I request you to unmute your line from your side and go with the question, please? Yeah, hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yes, Nikhil, we can hear you well. Yeah, so I have just uh, two data keeping questions. So what is our slippages, uh, recoveries, and upgrades and write-off for this quarter? So uh, if you look uh, on a gross basis, we had around 55 crores of slippages, and we had around 45 crores of uh, pullbacks. So after the first three quarters, I mean, this is one quarter where on a net basis, uh, we have hardly, barely had any kind of NPS, uh, you know, on a net basis. And we expect the same trend to continue. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we want to see that by Q2, uh, our recoveries are more than the flow forward. This okay. Uh, and what is our researching book for this quarter? Uh, like by FR23? No, so we have, I mean, uh, there's a, a book of around 100 odd crores that remains of the restructured book. Uh, as you would be aware that uh, we did a set of restructuring in December 2021 and after that, uh, all the moratorium got over in June 22. Uh, so so the entire book is back to being a built book. And, uh, and, and the, the residual book, like I said, is around 80 to 100 crores. Okay, and uh, just one last question. In cost of fund, how much rate we have passed on to the customer and uh, how much we are expecting in FY24? No, so uh, I think we expect around, uh, if you look at how we have built in our SMS for the next year, we expect uh, around 7.5% uh, to be the cost of fund on an overall basis from where we are today. Uh, we have baked in at least two rate hikes of 25 basis points each. Okay, okay, yeah. That's, that's some for my end. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ankur Kumar from Alpha Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Congrats. Very good set of numbers. Sir, most of my questions have been answered. Just wanted to check on cost to income ratio. So it has come down quite well in, in this quarter. So what kind of trend do you expect for, for the coming year? So, uh, you know, thanks for that. Uh, on a full year basis, uh, we expect our cost to income ratio, that one that we are working on, to be around 57% and thereabouts. Our medium term objective is that we are able to reach a 55% number. Uh, uh, and, and we would also like to highlight that the 57% uh, CTI uh, that we are talking about includes the 1% premium that we pay for CGFNU insurance, uh, which we expect to be around 
40, 40 to 45 crores. So, so that's what we are targeting for the next 12 months. Uh, uh, medium term, we would want to have a CTI of around 55%. Got it. So, and sir, on our NNPA and GNPA, so our guidance is less than 2% and less than 0.5%. So that will mean, as in, we will need to increase our PCR in the coming year. So you're saying that in Q1, we'll see a increase in PCR and then we'll expect steady state. Is how it will be increased? Yes, we will definitely see an increase in the PCR in Q1 and Q2. Uh, we obtain a PCR of somewhere around 90% plus. 90 percent yeah what is sir and sir on advanced growth so we are expecting 30 percent growth so can you bifurcate as in which segments will do and how how is the mfi situation are the things doing on the ground so uh, i would say that in terms of headline numbers uh we would want our uh, J, uh inclusive finance portfolio to be around 5000 crores right uh, and in so far as retail asset is concerned, we would want our we to be able to grow up bit by around 35 to 40 percent, uh, going a little over 3,000 crores for the retail asset portfolio overall. And how is the situation on the ground? As in, except for like COVID, etc., worries uh, things are looking good. I think we have some uh, work still to do in Maharashtra, where we have been careful in uh, doing new business. Uh, but in so far as the other states are concerned, uh, we have seen a, com a turnaround uh, and things more or less back to normal. Audit, sir. Thank you, and all. Yeah. Thank you. Participants, you may press start in one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Twinkle Katuria from Centrum Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Good morning, sir. Congratulations on the wonderful results. Uh, my question is, what is the growth driver for MFI EVM that would be expecting for FY24? Hello? Yeah, so we currently have a customer base of around approximately around good, very good customer base of 14 lakh customers. So there is approximately another 10 lakh customers who, are, who have been with us very good in the market based on the data search that we have who have exited us from whether they need a loan or during COVID period. So the base which we are targeting for the cast loan at this point of time is approximately 5 lakh to 6 lakh customers. The overall targeted for the existing and the customers who exited recently in the last one one year is approximately 20 lakh. So the driver would be in terms of on the back of customers either who are with us at this point of time and very good, both through the COVID-1 and COVID-2, or customers who are very good in the market, not borrowed from us or not borrowed from anybody else. And that's another another 10 lakh customers. So that's the pool. As well as we're also putting up around closer to 18 new branches. Predominantly in the states, we're already present, but not uh, deep in our presence like Karnataka, uh, Gujarat, uh, Rajasthan, and some other states. So the combination of this existing customer probably will contribute to of the growth of 25% indicated by KKC. 80% uh, will come from existing customers, and 20% will be coming from new to bank customers from new to uh, from the new branches. Thank you, sir. That answers my question. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Prati Kumar, Individual Investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning and congratulations on a great sort of result. Thank I you. have two questions. Just to clarify, we're talking of a 35 crore overall uncovered exposure on an AUM base of north of 6,000 crores. That's Roughly around 50 basis points of AUM, which is just confirmed that. And secondly, just wanted to understand how are the corrections trending on our post COVID book in the inclusive finance and in the retail asset space? Yeah, so yes, uh, uh, you are right in your understanding. So, adjusted for the provision we are carrying in the ACLGS book, uh, it's around 0.5% of uncovered uh, bad book that we are talking about. And so far as collections is concerned, uh, it's around 98% plus. Uh, we have some amount of uh, work to do in the retail assets and being able to pull back some of the NPS that we have seen in the second half of the year. And that's what we are focusing on for this quarter. Uh, but on an overall basis, like I said, 98% fee is what we are having today. Uh, 
Thank you, sir. Thank you sir, for the clarification. Thank you. Arsimans, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from line of Chetan Garodia, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I had two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, what percent of our bulk deposits are non callable? And the second is um, uh, the, the, we had a negative impact of uh, around 11 crore in, on Treasury in this quarter. So what's the outlook in the next year and the quarters ahead? Thank you. Hey, hi, uh, thanks for that. So, you know, almost all of our entire book on the bulk deposits is non-callable uh, because that's uh, that's what we primarily do, right? 99% uh, plus is, uh, is the number. Uh, in so far as, uh, you know, mark-to-market -market is concerned, yes, uh, we, we have seen, uh, we expect the rates to rise at least in the near term. And for that reason, what we have done is that in our investment book, uh, uh, our, the G six are something that we have restricted to the hold to maturity part of the portfolio, and in so far as the AFS portfolio is concerned, uh, we are essentially holding only treasury bills uh, to ensure that uh, the mark to market if any is minimized, and that will continue to be our strategy for this year as well. All right, thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pranav Singh, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, thank you, and uh, congratulations for the great set of numbers. My question is regarding regards loans. Uh, you know, on these loans, people, on such loans, there are people who are charging even much higher than 30% interest rates. So these loans can give us more profits during good times, but during bad times, it is possible that the defaults are higher also. So credit screening becomes very important. If you could share, uh, give us some insights on how you do it, that would be great. So now what we do is we're all graduating customers who have been with us for a minimum period of at least one and a half years with a clear, visible business and done both through physical verification which we use an app called Sarathi app, where we capture the details of the customer and their household, not just the customer, and also capture the photograph of the customer household from outside, as well as the business location. And of course, the 60% operate businesses from within their residences or just outside the residence. And around 40 to 40% have got a clear uh, separate business line. Uh, the very fact that is rightly polluted too is that there is always risk in the segment because the but however these customers that have been with us have a demonstrated business line which generates income and most of the Vikas loan customers at this point of time have a minimum of two incomes in the household, which is either the spouse or the lady of the household who is a borrower or a son or their son or a daughter. So given that and we also work majority higher loans, we can only insist in terms of the funding only to customers who have got a permanent residence that is have been there for a very long time or and in many cases, they own the place. Uh, the very reason that we are not really want to increase the pricing in that is that we want to rather cover ourselves with uh, a CGFM new cover, which I explained earlier, covers up to around 20% of the credit losses, got to whatever is to happen, and we get 70% of that. The intent is to really can you build a strong base of this customer, not just for unsecured business loan, for a period of time for small ticket lab as we are introducing, and also for micro home loans or a proper home loan, which could be in the range of around 15, 20 lakhs. These are the aspirational low-income households uh, in the past to really become a lower middle class or middle middle class. So we are very focused. We don't just do it as a distribution business. We understand the customer. We underwrite them digitally and centrally, though we need them before. And the intent is to really can really create a line where the customer can have access to loans and as we quite not working in terms of not even 27 percent for you know inches lower for very good customer in the second cycle of the cost one and third cycle. Thank thank you so much. Uh, just a follow up question. So when I look at FY22 and FY23, it seems that group loans have gone down from about 3100 crores to 2500 crores, and the cost loans have uh, really scaled up. So could you share your views and how you want to grow uh, group loans versus the cost loans in future? Your thoughts about that. Yeah. The way we are looking at is that customers coming to the JSD would love to graduate, would like to graduate. They would like to be assessed for what they are 
capable of repayment as well as their own as per their own aspiration and the requirement and the experiment we did while it has scaled up from 200 to 1200 crore it's actually a four year product for us we tested it small we didn't really wanted to rush in before we understood and then finally kind of one of the mechanisms we came out with since all the customers have a banking account with us the entire repayment is through uh, debiting i mean through the standing instruction mode fi mode and then we know what the balances are in the account we match them to kind of put in the balance even before we hit the standing instruction on the due date and our coverage has been around close to 90% of the customers do transfer the money well before the due date and hence 90% of the emis get collected on the first day of our standing instruction being debited in their accounts and the remaining 9% is when we reach out to them quite a few of them transfer it to their account and a very few probably less to 2 to 3% we go and collect on our own just like a jail you know so it's a graduating product to reach the foot in the door for a new customer will be through the jail in the low income household once they have kind of established a track record we have been mentioning them and motivating them to move to the customer they find it comfortable we find it very comfortable because we are able to assess the customer on her into our her or her household the capability economic status and the requirements of the loan that's why very similar between here 60000 on the lower end to as high as around 1.25 lakhs we we have quite a bit of a things to do it's kind of just about two years of scale and we are very very conscious of the fact that these are all not businesses where based on one or two years of our own experience we can scale it so we will grow probably around 30 to 35 percent but mostly it is the customers with established track record with no default to anybody apart not even just us to anybody in the market so which means that they are well seasoned well uh, disciplined in terms of credit and we can also take a call on them thank you uh, thank you so the last question do you have in mind a proportion of group loans versus vikas loans in your portfolio or you would like to grow them both at like at the same rate we haven't really put a number to that at this point of time but the intent is that the customer coming to us is new to bank would be through the jsb and customers wanting to graduate or uh, motivate them to graduate after one and a half years and two years with us would be through the customer so we need both we need group loans to acquire more and more new customers they acquire closer to 30 to 50000 new customers every month which comes through us and then and as they graduate they go to vikas loan however we are also con- contemplating interviewing new to bank vikas loan customers on a very small scale in the q2 which will be people who have got demonstrated track record for more than 3 years with others but not necessarily with us they are new to bank or with an established credit track record we will experiment in terms of very small scale in terms of new to bank as well in q2 Thank you so much. All my questions have been answered. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. Next follow-up question is from line of Chatham. Individual investor, please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the follow-up opportunity again. Uh, I had a question on uh, around the uh, the Vikas loan. So uh, the presentation. Uh, mentions that uh, around 69% of our uh, vikas loans are covered under the uh, credit insurance uh, uh, policy so is that because of the the size of the uh, size of the loans that only 69% are, are covered that's my first question and second question is that uh, as you mentioned that 75% of the amount under vikas loans uh, uh, is covered uh so h- how would be the provisions accounted uh, going forward when uh, we cast on terms back thank you hey, sure you know so the amount of portfolio that uh, we cover under the credit guarantee scheme uh, depends on a few factors including the residual tenor right? so something that has less than 6 months tenor and have been consistently paying we may choose not to insure the same Uh, uh on the other side if you look at the provisioning part of it uh as things stand today uh, we we do standard provisioning uh for uh, all our unsecured loans in accordance with the irac guidelines of rbi but as a management uh what we would ideally want to be doing is to you know uh, make counter cyclical provisions for our unsecured book over a period of time Uh, have done about 0.5 percent of the unsecured book as counter cyclical provision uh, this this quarter, and we would want to take that number gradually up on a quarter on quarter basis. Uh, understand, sir. Uh, uh, going forward, uh, apart from the standard uh, set provision uh, for Vikas loans, since the coverage is 75 percent, as I understand from one of the previous answers. 
um would that mean that we would have to provide the rest uh, 25% of the loan amount uh, when uh, it turns gnp or we would have to cover more of it no so uh, irac circulars require us to make a 25% provision when an uh, you know unsecured loan account turns nta uh, that will that's what we will have to do as well but i think as a management strategy what we would want is that we would want to build up you know a contingency or a floating provision uh, we would be to book that we carry so so what i said was that we made about 0.5% operation this time around to start with and we will gradually be making that counter cyclical on a quarter on quarter basis going forward um, we would want to ideally have somewhere between 3 to 5% of counter cyclical provisions uh, with us at any point in time uh, over and above the cgfm we want sure to cover okay understand sir uh, thank you very much for answering my questions thank you next question is from line of jagdish sharma individual investor please go ahead uh good morning sir uh congrats for the great set of numbers so for the 65 crore provision uh so 65 crore provision for etl is this when when can we expect the money will be back at can can you guys get us back the money this uh if you have started getting reimbursement as of now approximately around uh, 14 crores of portfolio has been cleared there is a capacity okay. issue holding it so 14 crores 50% has been paid up front as we speak up of course 27 and of course is what they have recovered so the flow has been very smooth as we load we get 50% of it and 50% of certain point of time so i would say that the probably by september end we should have uploaded all the data and technically meaning we should have got around close to 25 to 30 crores and the remaining 30 crores would come in with a gap of around 6 months or one year okay 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 so thank you that's my question all the all the very best thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask the question as there are no further questions i will now hand the conference over to mr shailesh khanani for closing comments uh thanks a lot uh uh, 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 uh mr baskar would you like to have any closing comments uh, for the quarter yeah sure yeah uh, thanks shailesh so uh, th- thank you for all your continued support and we look forward to be delivering very consistent performance quarter on quarter there is the last two years have been very challenging lots of valuable learning what we look forward is to really maintain consistency across and for which we would uh, do what that would be required both in terms of counter cyclical provisions being very prudent yeah, and how we are focusing continue to focus on our inclusive finance customer segment while diversifying into retail assets for a period of time we look forward to be delivering this on a consistent basis and we have started to uh, given giving the guidance of the 24 and very confident that we will reach it in a very predictable and consistent manner thank you very much for participating thank you good day thank you very much On behalf of Centrum Broking Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your names. Thank you. Thank you.